Hi, this is Lori, and welcome to my project on connecting an HC SR04 ultrasonic sensor to a Raspberry Pi. So here's a picture of the ultrasonic sensor. It has four pins. It has a power pin, a ground pin, a trig, and an echo pin. And it has two um, transducers, one that sends or transmits an ultrasonic sound uh, pulse and the other that receives the pulse. So uh, you can kind of see this diagram here. Here it's sending out the ultrasonic sound pulse. It hits an object and then reflects it back and is received. So we can track the time it takes for the sound to hit an object and come back and use that to figure out what the distance to the object is. So we use the equation distance equals velocity times time. So we're using sound, so we know the speed of sound, and then we'll be able to use this sensor to calculate the time it took for the sound to go out, bounce off the object, and come back. So we have everything we need to calculate the distance. So how this works uh, inside the sensor is uh, we have to trigger the sonic pulse to come out. So we trigger it by setting the trigger pin to high uh, for 10 microseconds. So you can kind of see here in this diagram. There's the 10 microseconds of sending the trigger pin high. And then we'll uh, have eight sonic bursts come out of the um, transducer. And when that's completed, the echo pin will automatically go to high and it'll stay high until it detects the sound coming back, um, being reflected back from the object. Now, if it never gets, it never hits an object, then it'll time out after uh, 38 uh, milliseconds. Um, and if we keep track of how long the echo pen stays high, we know how long the sonic pulse was um, traveling. So that gets us back to the distance calculation. So we know that it's traveling at the speed of sound, and we know how long it took, uh, how long the echo pen was high. But we need to divide that by two because it's the time that it went out and back from the object. So uh, we'll divide by two to calculate that distance. Now it turns out that the speed of sound is dependent on temperature and humidity and altitude. So it's not just one number that we can plug in for the speed of sound in air. Um, so you kind of have to make a choice uh, about what number you're going to use for that. So for me, I decided to use the speed of sound at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So that ends up being 344.44 meters per second. And then I just converted it to centimeters per second. And we take the time, divide by two, and that'll give us the distance in centimeters. So in this little bubble here, I have a link to a calculator that can be used to get the temperature adjusted speed of sound. So it matters what model of this uh, sensor you have. And it turns out there's quite a few different models out there. Uh, depending on where you got yours from, you could have any one of these. And in fact, I have four of them, different models in, in my lab. And you can see some pictures I, I took of them and, and a little bit of the naming uh, structure that I found for them. And really, uh, looking at the fronts, it's a little hard to tell which one you have. They look really similar. Uh, it's really the backs that kind of give you the information about which one uh, you have. Um, so let's uh, just talk a little bit about them. So uh, HCSR04, um, the one with the pretty complicated back, uh, that one needs to be powered at 5 volts. Um, and because of that, your logic is also going to be at 5 volts. So it's going to send back logic on the echo uh, pin at 5 volts. So if you're going to use it with this with a Raspberry Pi, uh, you're going to need a voltage divider to make sure that you're not sending back 5 volts into the Raspberry Pi, which is a 3.3 volt device. So um, I did try to power it um, with 3.3 volts off of my Raspberry Pi, and I couldn't get good readings coming back. So uh, definitely need to run this one at 5 volts. Now, um, the next one is uh, looks really similar, although the back is a little bit different. And you'll see on the back that there's a 2020 marking on the back of it. And this is the one that I got out of my SunFounder kit uh, for the Raspberry Pi. And uh, I looked in their um, instructions, and they didn't use a voltage divider with this circuit. And uh, it does appear that powering it with 3.3 volts off your Raspberry Pi is fine with the voltage divider. 
Um, but I just want to point out I couldn't really get a clear answer, so um, just be careful using this uh, without one. Um, but it does appear to work, and it gets good re readings at 3.3 volts. The next one is um, got a, definitely a different name, so you're not going to get confused by this one. And you can see the back of it also uh, different from the others. And this one uh, operates both at 3 volts and 5 volts, and it automatically switches the logic to, um, to be the logic of the power uh, in. So a uh, nice thing about it is it uses all the same libraries, um, and you don't need to change your code to use this model. The only thing that's a little bit different is it's smaller. It's a little bit smaller, and so if you're mounting it onto something that's expecting the larger version of this uh, um, sensor, then um, you're going to have to adapt uh, your mounting uh, for this model. But it's nice that it works at both of those uh, automatically and is very clear um, that, that it works that way. And then the last one is one called uh, HCSR04P. And uh, that one's also advertised to work at both 3 volts and 5 volts. And you can see the back is maybe a little more similar to the, to the other one here. And it has that P. You'll see the P on the back here, uh, the marking. And I found that it worked just fine at 3 volts for me. OK, here's the circuit for 3.3 uh, volt operation. We'll uh, connect up to the Raspberry Pi extension board. And we'll pull the 3.3 volts off of the Raspberry Pi and create a ground rail. So we have a power and ground rail here, which we'll use to power and ground the sensor. And then the trigger and echo pin will connect back into GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. So pretty simple for a 3 volt operation. But to use the 5 volt sensor, we'll need to add that voltage divider. So we'll need to do a little bit of calculation to figure out how to set one up. So this is a diagram of a voltage divider. So you have your voltage in, um, and you'll have two resistors, and you'll take your signal uh, coming out of here and say so you want to um, make your voltage out, uh, whatever you would like. So in our case, we know we're going to have 5 volts coming in. And we want 3.3 volts coming out. So we know those two things. And then we have to kind of decide what are the two resistors we're going to use here. So this equation over here is uh, how we'll calculate that. And so it's easiest to just kind of say, OK, let's assume we're going to have one of the resistors be you know, a resistor that you have in hand. So I decided to use a 1K uh, resistor. And now I'm going to try to figure out what should I pair it with. So if I put all that information into this equation, so you can see here, here's the 1,000 for uh, the resistor that I have in hand. So now I'm trying to figure out what the other resistor should be. Uh, so keep, go through and do all the calculations. And it says, well, that resistor should be at about 1941. OK, well, there's no resistor exactly like that. But there is a resistor at 2.2. So I'll take that one. And if you run through the equation uh, again with those two values, you'll find that the output voltage should be about 3.4 volts. So uh, that should be fine. That should be good enough. So that's what we'll use in our circuit. And so here's the circuit with uh, 5 volt operation. So now I'm going to create the power rail using the 5 volts off of the Raspberry Pi and pull a ground as well. And I'll pass it around just to make this diagram look a little simpler. And here's our sensor. Here's the power and ground. And you can see that the trigger pin just goes right to the Raspberry Pi. That's fine. But the echo pin, here's our voltage divider. And so you can see that in between the two resistors, we're going to pull off our echo pin and send it into the Raspberry Pi. And it'll only have 3.4 volts uh, coming in. So that should be fine for the Raspberry Pi. So. Um, I decided to compare the four models that I had in my lab. And so you can see a chart uh, here of the results so far. So I took 100 readings per model. And uh, I set up the target at 50 centimeters and um, got 100 pieces of data from, from each, 100 readings. So I kept everything um, the same. So I just slipped in and out the, uh, the sensors. Uh, so really, everything should have stayed pretty constant from from run to run. And you can kind of see how the results look. Um, pretty pretty similar and decent operation from all four of them. Um, the This model here, the 5 volt model, did have an outlier that came in. And uh, so that's something uh, 
I've noticed as I've uh, used these uh, all of these models is that occasionally you can get a uh, an outlier or spurious result from from these kinds of uh, sensors. Um, so if you're doing some calculations and you're taking a bunch of readings, you, you may want to develop some kind of strategy for, for dealing with outliers from this kind of a device. Um, maybe instead of using maybe the mean of several uh, results, you might want to use the median so that, so that outliers don't uh, affect it. Um, and, and it's not just this device. When I have done other runs, I've gotten outliers from some of the other models. So it's just unlucky for this one in the, re the ones I decided to graph. So, uh, so that gives you a little sense of how the different models work. And I guess it also makes you feel good that you could use any of them and get decent results uh, depending on your, your application. So let's take a look at the code to run the ultrasonic sensor. First, we'll load the modules and set up the board numbering system. We'll create a delay time variable and we'll set up the trigger and echo pins on GPIO 23 and 24 and set them up as output and input. In our while true loop, uh, we'll start the process by setting the trigger pin to low for two microseconds, and then we'll set it high for 10 microseconds to trigger the ultrasonic burst. Then we'll set it low again, and now we'll wait until the echo pin goes high. So this while pass code will wait until it goes high, and then we'll catch that time when that happens. Then we'll wait again with another while and pass um, until the echo pin goes low. That means the, the sound has been received back, and we'll record that time as well. Then the travel time will be the difference between those two times. And we'll use that in our calculation for the distance in centimeters uh, times our speed of sound and divide by two. And I also um, converted that into inches, printed that to the screen, then the delay time to slow it down just a little bit, and it'll start over and take another reading. We'll leave the program using a keyboard interrupt. We'll do our GPIO cleanup. So here's the setup I'm using. You can see the Target is a box that I have using a yardstick, and I have the box at 40 centimeters. And uh, panning back, you see the other models I have, and I've got one of the models hooked up in a 3 volt uh, circuit, and that's all connected to my Raspberry Pi. So let's watch the program run. We'll kick it off here in Thonny. And there we go. You can see it's getting pretty close to uh, 40 centimeters, which is where I have the target place. So that's working pretty well. And uh, to leave, we'll just do the keyboard interrupt. So here's how I adapted the code to be able to collect the data into a, a file so I could do analysis on the data. Um, so it writes the data to a file, data.txt. So uh, all of it's pretty similar except for here where uh, as you start the program it asks you how many uh, readings do you wish to uh, gather. So you input a number there and then you can give a short description to describe uh, the run that you're doing. Uh, maybe you're running the 5 volt model or another model, that kind of thing, uh, to distinguish it. So it's easy to forget these sorts of things. Um, and then we're going to print that information to a file called data.txt, and we're going to do it in append mode. So you can actually keep running this program over and over again, and it'll keep appending all your data one after the other, and it'll be separated by the number of uh, distances you wanted and your description. So the loop is pretty similar, uh, runs through and does all the same calculations, um, except for down here, it prints the data both to the shell and to the file um, here, data.txt. Goes through the sleep and uh, continues going, and then it does a GPIO cleanup. So um, one thing that happens is it's only going to run for the number of readings that you asked for, instead of just continuing to run until you do a keyboard interrupt. So yeah, that's kind of nice. It just closes out there for you. So that's how I gathered the data to make that graph. Now let's run the code that records the data in a file. So I'll kick it off here in Thonny, and you can see it's going to ask me for how many um, readings I want. So I'm going to say 10. 
and a short description. So I'll say demo. And we should get 10 results to the screen here. And uh, we'll also see that a data.txt file appeared here in the directory. We'll just double click that open. And there you can see what the data file looks like. So it has a little uh, comment here, how many we asked for, and then the text that we entered as the description, and then our 10 numbers. So that's how that works.